I like big bugs and I cannot lie, which is why we talk about them instead of singing about them or rapping about them because you definitely never want to hear me rap. That's for sure. So today I've taken out this really beautiful mega fauna. His name is Megasoma Acteon and he is a rhinoceros beetle because today we are talking all about exoskeletons and why they're so hard and what they're made out of. As per usual, there's a PDF. And all you have to do to get it is go straight down into the description box and there's a link right there, no strings attached, and you can follow along with the video. So before we can get too far, we have to talk about what an exoskeleton even is. And an exoskeleton is just a skeleton that is found on the outside of the animal's body. So in this case of this beetle, like everything you can see is the exoskeleton because he has no bones on the inside. People have what we call endoskeletons or skeletons on the inside or bones. One of the most obvious benefits of an exoskeleton is it protects all of the soft squishy bits on the inside. Beetles can crash into things, they can crawl under logs, they can fight with each other and not get hurt because of this big exoskeleton. That is one of the pros of the exoskeleton is that your body is protected from basically blunt force and other types of damage and trauma. Another one of the pros of the exoskeleton is that it helps retain water. So it's very difficult for the insect to dry out. Of course, there are exceptions in every case, but this is how you get insects, especially beetles that can live in deserts or that can live at the top of volcanoes. Humans, if we don't drink water for three days, we die. Like that's it, game over, no extra lives. <laughs> but some insects, don't even need to drink water for days, weeks, months, even years. And that is partly and thanks to the exoskeleton that helps keep water in. The third thing about the exoskeleton is that it has much better physics in relation to leverage of muscles. So with our bones, there's only a few places where you can hook the muscles up to, you know, like move your arm and stuff. But because of how the exoskeleton is set up, there are all of these little indentations on the inside of the exoskeleton where muscles can hook up to. This gives insects way better leverage and so they need less force to do basically the same type of work. Unfortunately in nature, because nothing is perfect, there are a few cons with having an exoskeleton. The first is that you have to molt this exoskeleton if you want to grow. And what that means is that when you wanna get bigger, you have to break open the exoskeleton and then you have to leave it, which is a very dangerous process because it takes a decent amount of time, sometimes up to 20 minutes or even an hour to leave the exoskeleton. And then you just sit there waiting while your exoskeleton hardens. And that is so dangerous for you because you are like the perfect snack because you have basically no defenses. You're the perfect snack for any sort of predator to come back and find you and numb on you. And so you're coming out of your exoskeleton and you're just like waiting like, I hope no one eats me for like up to a couple hours before your exoskeleton hardens. So that is one major drawback. The second two drawbacks kind of go hand in hand. The first one is that you generally have less maneuverability. Obviously that's not true for all insects. If you think of dragonflies, they're particularly mobile. But when you start getting these insects with these really thick, heavy duty exoskeletons like the beetles, your maneuverability just goes downhill real quickly. And that's because the harder you make your exoskeleton, the heavier you are and the harder it is to move around. A lot of people ask me because they look at beetles and they see that the forewing has been hardened into this hard shell as a protective covering. And they ask me, how do these beetles fly? And the answer is twofold. One, with their hind wings and two, poorly. <laughs> Very poorly. Many beetles are just buzzing around and they just crash into things. They don't really stop that well. People who hear these beetles alive sound like, say they sound like a helicopter coming in, they just crash land into the lodge or the light. 
So yeah, your maneuverability isn't great and you just kind of crash a lot if you have these big thick exoskeletons. Okay, 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 that's fine. But I know that you're really here because you wanna know what the exoskeleton is made out of. And dear friend, the exoskeleton is made out of a thing called chitin. So let's get to it. All arthropods use chitin for the exoskeleton. That includes insects, that includes spiders, and that includes crabs and shrimp. So when you're enjoying that plate of seafood, you're cracking through some chitin to get at that nice soft meat. Chitin is a polysaccharide, which is a long sugar chain, but it's a modified polysaccharide because it has nitrogen attached to it. So it's very similar to cellulose, which is found in plants. That's what celery is named after. And cellulose makes a cell wall of plants. While it is more chemically similar to cellulose, chitin, or what makes the exoskeleton of the insects, is more functionally similar to keratin, which is a protein that we have in our hair and in our fingernails. Chitin is the basic building block for the insect exoskeleton, but it's not the only player. To make the exoskeleton very hard, like you see in these beetles, you need another protein, which is called sclerotin. Claritin makes the exoskeleton hard through a natural tanning process by which proteins are then cross-linked and joined by another chemical called quinone. And this cross-linking is what makes the exoskeleton so hard. So let's compare and contrast scleritin and chitin. So first of all, chitin is the basic building block you find in all insects, and its main properties are that it's soft and pliable. Think again about a caterpillar that can kind of just inch along. So it's soft and pliable, and also clear and translucent. That is so important because that is how you get things like structural color. That's how you get these like beautiful morphos with their really pretty colors. It's because clear chitin is stacked up in a certain way to reflect light. More in that in a different video. But that's how you get those really beautiful colors. It's because the chitin is clear. Chitin is a polymer with a very specific formula. Chitin always looks molecularly the same no matter what you do to it. And it's characterized by hydrogen bonding. Scleritin is not needed in the formation of the exoskeleton. It's basically an add-on. You're like, oh, I need plus one strength. Add scleritin. <laughs> Scleritin is black or brown, and that's because scleritin uses melanin in the tanning process to cross-link the proteins and make the exoskeleton hard. Because scleritin is an add-on, not all insects have scleritin. This beetle who's really hard and, and really tough, he has a lot of scleritin in him. But something like a caterpillar, which is really soft and really squishy, and you can easily just kind of go like with your hands, that the caterpillar is mainly just made up of chitin and doesn't have a lot of scleritin and so his exoskeleton is not very hard. And more to the point, this same insect might not have scleritin in all of its life stages. For example, this beetle started off as like a little, well, kind of large white grub and that grub is really soft and very pliable. It doesn't have a lot of scleritin. And more to the point, some insects don't have scleritin in all of the body parts. It's really common to find scleritin in the mandibles where the insect might be chewing through hard exoskeletons or other hard materials, but the rest of the insect is relatively scleritin free because they don't need it. So I hope that you guys liked this brief segment about exoskeletons, chitin, and scleritin, and that helped clear up some things about what the exoskeleton is actually made of. So stay tuned next week when we have another bug-related video. Bye!